I think I'd like to be trapped in an uh, elevator with um, Seamus Heaney uh, because uh, he's a novel, he's a poet and I'm a novelist. We both went to the Christian Brothers, he in Ireland, me in Australia. So we've we're both got a sort of ethnic subtext to share. Uh, but above all, I'd like to discuss history with him, uh, experience with him, uh, and discuss his own part in resolving uh, the problems of Ireland, because I think he's a bit of a Gandhi-esque uh, character. Uh, as well as that, I just love his poetry. So I'd just say, okay, Seamus, um, you know, we've got a few hours before the mechanic arrives. Just reel it off, mate. Just give it to us straight. And he'd say, oh, oh no, no. And I'd say, look, I'm begging you to. And so a delightful period would pass. Yes, it, I, I think it would uh, be Dostoevsky. Uh, I could ask him why the idiot is so readable uh, and the Brothers Karamazov is magnificent but such a test. I would like to ask him why he is so God-struck, doom-struck, uh, what happened to him in his childhood that made him like that, apart from the fact that all Russians are a bit like that. I'd like to ask him about his gambling habits and thus his relationship with publishers uh, and getting money out of them to pay for gambling habits. I'd like to ask him about he, his uh, period in prison, uh, as in the house uh, that he wrote about in the house of the, the dead. Uh, and um, so for all those reasons, uh, I'd love to um, meet him. And there's something about him which makes me think he'd be a good talker. There's something about his writing that makes me think also he won't think, who is this Australian barbarian? He, he'll be interested in barbarians. Uh, and so, Dostoevsky. Excellent. Uh, well, shamefully, the art of recitation isn't what it was. Uh, but I suppose, now that I'm getting older, uh, I would like to recite uh, the Irish song, <clears throat> which I've told my wife I want for my recessional and it is called The Parting Glass. It's a beautiful song. And its lyrics are very zen. Um, and they go, all the money I ever had, I spent it in good company. My God, is that the truth? And all the harm I ever did, at least it was in chief to me. And it is true, all the harm you try to do others does greater harm to yourself. And all I did for want of wit to memory now, I can't recall. So raise to me the parting glass, good night, and joy be to you all. Uh, it's it's a, um, a bit of politics. Uh, a bit of sport, because I'm a typical Antipodean sporting buff head. Uh, I particularly involve, I'm particularly involved in a sport called rugby league, which I played as a little kid. Uh, and uh, with the Manly Warringah team. So a mixture of reading, of grandchildren, of love, of walking in the bush, the atmospherics of the book, bush I've got hooked on, and fortunately I live next door to a national park. Uh, and um, uh, what have I left out? Cryptic crosswords, um, two glasses of wine in the evening, the physical book as well as the cyber book. I'm amazed by the cyber book. 
these things are essential parts of happiness, but they don't add up to happiness, sadly, because we are chemical creatures and often the serotonin level in us isn't high enough uh, to make us enjoy and appreciate these things. But on a good day, um, love, grandchildren, a cryptic crossword, and always some work. I would find it hard to do without my work. Um, uh, all, all these things come together. And of course, when uh, Manly Warringah uh, beats the um, Auckland Warriors and my serotonin levels are high enough, that is a part of my happiness too. Uh, what most occupies my thoughts in an anxiety sense is a death. Anyone who's 74 who doesn't know he's going to die is a fool. Now, you're just as likely to die in your 30s. However, you're very aware of it in your 70s. Uh, the world you're going to leave uh, grandchildren, that is a concern. Australia, compared to 200 years ago, is so environmentally degraded. And the world is changing either through a natural pulse of climate or through human-induced climate change in a way that could be catastrophic. Uh, the decline of the publishing industry, insofar as it is declining, uh, concerns me a bit. Not in the sense that I'm against the new technology. I'm all for them, I use them, but I just wonder how long the physical book will last. My, mind you, it's interesting to me that people still want to be published in book form, in physical Gutenberg form, between covers. Uh, and uh, long may that be so. But there's some of the concerns. Um, uh, not um, my wife dying before me is a concern because as I like to say jovially, uh, and I assure you I'm joking, but my father when he said it to my mother wasn't, he, he said don't die before me because then who'll get a man's dinner? And uh, uh, so there's some of the concerns and, and of course the welfare of grandchildren. Uh, well, when I began reading big books, the first book I re read about the age of 11, I think, I mean, I wasn't a child prodigy, was Sir Walter Scott's Ivanhoe. And then very soon after that, I saw the movie that had all these glamorous old Hollywood types in it. Uh, the movie was not as good as the book, of course. Uh, but for a few years, when I'd try to write novels, I tried to write by Sir Walter Scott, which is very hard to do in the western suburbs of Sydney. Um, so that was, uh, you know, one of, the, one of my breakthrough books.